All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to the King's Speech. Uh, it's been a while since uh, I've done one of these videos. Uh, I meant to do, I actually put out these reactions uh, last week, but got busy with life and work in general, uh, going into basically my busy season for my uh, work stuff for the next two, three-ish months. So uh, yeah. I'm going to do videos sporadically during that time. I wouldn't expect, you know, my regular uh, Weekly Shonen Jump reaction review stuff. I wouldn't expect that for the next little while. Uh, if I have some free time, downtime sometime, I might try and do it. But, uh, you know, be busy most of the time, so I'll try to put these in whenever I can. Uh, that said, I'm just going to plug some stuff really quick before I get into kind of the main event here. Uh, this weekend... I will be on two separate streams, uh, one with the Black Manga Critic and a bunch of other friends and some newer uh, people. We're going to be talking about the uh, sexual assault allegations with Vic Mignogna, you know, everything that's been going on with Funimation and the Me Too movement stuff uh, within the anime industry. Uh, so we're going to kind of try to break down, you know, what the problems are, how long it's been going on, you know, what we as a community can kind of do better to kind of address these problems. So that's going to be on Saturday. I'll retweet the link uh, when we go live with that. And then on Sunday, uh, we will be doing a One Piece stream. I'm going to have a bunch of, again, friends you're probably familiar with uh, on stream. You know, Black Manga Critic's going to be there. Uh, Scarlet's going to be there. Gabby's going to be there. Uh, we've got a couple of others. Uh, Kendra's going to be there. We're going to have a couple of others on. New faces on as well. And we're going to be talking about the women of One Piece and kind of Oda's approach to them and storytelling and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. But without further ado, the thing we're actually here to talk about finally got my hands on Monstrous by uh, Marjorie Liu. And Sana Takeda. I have heard a lot of good things about this novel and I'm super excited to dive into it. So I'm going to read the synopsis first to kind of get you give you an idea for anyone that doesn't know what this is about to give you an idea what this series is about. And I'm also going to read a little bit of the afterword from the author talking about you know why they got got how they got the idea for writing this series and kind of their inspiration for it, so I'll start with that. So, uh, forward first. So, set in an alternate world of art deco beauty and steampunk horror, Monstrous tells the epic story of Micah Halfwolf, a teenage survivor of a cataclysmic war between humans and their hated enemies, the Arcanix. In the face of oppression and terrible danger, Micah is both hunter and hunted, searching for answers about her mysterious past as those who seek to use her remain just one step behind, and all the while, the monster within begins to awaken. And then the afterword by Marjorie Liu, I believe, yes. So, Monstrous was more a desire than an idea, an impulse that came over me, something I'd think about in the shower or when I was driving and listening to Janet Jackson on the radio. I had this image in my head of a battered girl, standing alone, absolutely furious, and behind her, a battlefield that stretched for miles. I didn't know what to do with it, and I'm not all that patient, but I had no choice in this matter. Nothing was there. No story. Just that girl. I don't know anything about war, not having lived through one, but my grandparents experienced the devastation of war firsthand in China. In their stories, surviving was more horrifying than dying. Surviving required a desire to live more powerful than any bomb or army, a summoning of superhuman resilience to keep going day after day. Starvation, biological experimentation, rape camps, occupation, colonization, what ravaged Europe during World War II also ravaged China and the rest of Asia, and the victims of this horror had to learn how to first survive and then survive the surviving. To be Chinese-American meant the war loomed upon the history of my world. I grew up hearing my grandparents tell nightmarish stories, heartbreaking too, and also heroic beyond words. What they endured I could scarcely imagine. 
I always, I thought always, if I could only be as strong as them. My grandparents were Chow Chun. I'm a twig in comparison. That's okay. My imagination is strong. And the root of my desire, I finally realized, was to tell a story about what it means to be a survivor. A survivor not just of a cataclysmic war, but of racial conflict and its antecedent, antecedent hatred. And to confront the question, how does one whom history has made a monster escape her monstrosity? How does one overcome the monstrousness of others without succumbing to a rising monstrousness within? The image of that furious girl never left me. She followed me from Beijing to Boston and to Japan, where Sana and I first began our collaboration and where that girl finally began to speak. And here we are, and here you are. And here she is too. Sana and I thank you deeply for partaking in the epic journey of this haunted young woman who believes she's alone, with the war far behind her, and another one rising like a doom, like a monster, on the horizon. I like to think my grandparents would have recognized her. Much love, Marjorie Liu. So, you can tell I'm super stoked to get into this series. Let's dive right in with Monsters. So the first page. It took three years to find a name. Another two years to find the prison. Or to find the person, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin our evening with Lot 819. Arcanic, but with a fully human appearance. 17 years old, virgin. Bidding will start at five pieces of gold. And now I'm here. So you see a young Asian woman, you know, long, dark hair, black hair coming to about here uh, with bangs. Uh, she's got the tattoo of an eye in the middle of her chest and she's missing her uh, left arm. And she's been collared with a chain. I promised myself I would never be in this position again. You see, she's in an auction house. You know, a bunch of old men in suits are sitting around her, watching her. She's being auctioned off. Are you certain she's an arcanic? We wouldn't want to buy a human by mistake. We're criminals, not savages. Don't be silly, Sir Conroy. Would I ever sell one of us? Besides, you know that not all arcanics resemble monsters. We provide scopes if you wish to confirm. And he goes, hmph, and her missing arm, that brand, even if she is a monster, she's deformed. I thought I'd rather die. She goes, no human house designed that brand, Sir Conroy. Her own people marked her, a barbarian ritual. As for her arm, yes, it's unsightly, not that most of you still have all your limbs. The war took its toll on both sides. And yet, look at her face. Wild beauty for your wild taste. He goes, I was wrong. Tuya says, I've lost my mind. So, shall we commence with the bidding? And you see a lady dressed in a very black and you know, like white china dress. And she goes, no, we shall not. It's like, I wish I could tell her. That's exactly what I'm trying to prevent. And so the lady that just spoke comes up, you know, with what looks like a wolfish beast man. He's got very dark skin, tattoos on his arms, white hair. He's like, my lady, how may I serve the Kumea? And she goes, you may donate the, this arcanic to our order. And the fox club, the cyclopean freak, and the stubby one with those useless wings. Of course, my lady. And then, what was it? Uh, what was his name? Sir Conroy goes, Corrupt, arrogant nuns, thinking they rule us. This is neutral territory, goddammit. She goes, Sir Conroy, two months from now, your wife is going to find you in bed with another man. Soon after, you'll be found stone cold dead. <laughs> And no one will be charged. Reflect on that. Ilsa, have the arcanic sent to my lab at the Kumea compound. As you wish, my lady. So, city of Zamora. So much was destroyed during the war. And yet some cities rebuilt themselves as if nothing happened. Too bad. 
Too bad people don't rebuild themselves so easily. Only five years, I've forgotten so much already. I can't afford to forget the blood, or who spilled it. See, they come, come, you can may hide in your outpost like bandits. At least spread some coin around. See, there are a few animals more treacherous than the cat. Assume the worst that you encounter one, no matter how untouched it might seem. I always hate seeing that wagon knowing what's inside. More work for us, that's sure. It's like many a Kumei has lost her life to such as spies and assassins. You see this raggedy looking white cat in a bird cage. And you see she's gonna chop us up, drink our blood. It's how the witch nuns get their power. It's like shut up, don't say that. Please don't let her take me, Mistress Elsa. You promised. You promised you'd find me someone good. All of you be quiet. What, no crying? Good, she likes them brave. Is that why you only deal in children? Watch your fucking mouth. You're a slave. An animal piece of shit on the wrong side of the wall. If there were a stalemate in the war, there wouldn't even be a wall, and all you inhuman freaks would be in chains. So Ilsa's just smoking, so she sticks her hand out, asks for the cigarette, and she hands it over and she goes, she's going to kill you. Even among the Kumeya, Sophia Fakiti is known for her knives. Yes, I never want to see those knives. That's your choice, Ilsa. He's like, you're a bitch, Micah. Ma'am, we've arrived. Send my best to your daughter, just in case. If you survive, you'll see her before I do. If you don't survive, you'll probably still see her before I ever will. Here's the lot. Be careful of this one. She still thinks she's human. It's like, no, and then she's trying to run away. It's like, fighting only makes it work. Only makes it worse. Be smart. Be obedient. That might keep you alive. But nothing will keep you whole. Not in that place. Atina, you are such a cheat. How did you ever come up with that elegant solution to the Matsukawa custom? I've been trying to solve it for years. Sophia, you have your talents and none of them involve math. And then we see, my lady, the new acquisition as requested. Ah, splendid. Atina, you must see this curiosity. You can leave, Gao. Give Rissak her fetters. She's maimed from the war or the harvest. Doesn't matter. Show us your chest, girl. I've seen this symbol in my research, but never on a person. She's been branded by one of those arcanic religious cults, the kind that worships those demonic monstrosities. Well, Sophia, not this again. You promised you would stop. I said no such thing. The monstra are just ghosts, unnerving but harmless apparitions. I tell you they can manifest in our world. The arcanics have found a way. Where's your material evidence? Where's your proof? The Kumeya have studied Monstra for a thousand years. Never once have they materialized into flesh and blood, nor harmed a living being, destroyed a city, plucked the petals off a flower. Even they don't see us, Sophia. And if the Arcanic could summon a Monstra, don't you think they would have done so by now? Oof. For fuck's sakes, they did. At the Battle of Constantine, I was at the border, Atina. I saw Sophia, for the final time, stop. The high engineer looked into your memories. She found nothing but a storm, an explosion. How can you continue to argue you witnessed something different? You weren't there, but your mother was, and she never supported you in this. The Kumea Council agreed it was nothing more than an incredibly powerful bomb most likely designed by those traitors. It was a bomb. We tied five of you witches together and set you on fire. And you went up real nice. <laughs> oh, I love Mike already. This, this is getting good. And Sophia's like, we'll use her tonight. This is the worst plan ever. One month ago. For real, Micah, you're a lo you are a loca. Absolutely loquisma. I can't believe you're considering this. 
hundreds of witches in the heart of a Kumiya stronghold. You won't even be able to pass as human if you get the chance. They'll take one look at you and know. Are you listening to me? We survived the war. We made lives for ourselves. Don't mess that up. There are better ways. Better but not shorter, Tuya. That doesn't mean you go on a suicide mission. Micah, please, why are you suddenly in such a rush? That's not what this is. Suicide, I mean. It wouldn't be the first time you tried to kill yourself. Micah gives the Ayatuya a look. She goes, I'm sorry, but once you're in, then what? You just ask for this woman? No one gets close to her, not even other Kume Kumeya. I just need to get into the compound. I'll figure out the rest. Oh gods, you think your special power will help you? It never works. It does when I'm in trouble, like almost never, and you'll be so alone. It must be strange, looking so human locked up in a place like this. Always thank the good Miriam, my blood-tested peer. But I suppose you already reconciled yourself to being an animal. Must have hurt when that arm came off and you hear a ka-clink, ka-clink as this ugly jailer lady with you know net just wrinkled face missing a tooth is just tapping on the bars i wonder what you'll lose this time i can't wait to find out aha ah here we go lady sophia has started and your zzz, 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 zzz sound it's like i love these moments Even the building screams. You see they're in a domed underground, you know, building. And you see a bunch of, it's a lot of circular ones, you see a bunch of jail cells lining the outside. You see a wheelbarrow with some bloodied clothing. And you see two more guards dragging off the little cyclops child she bought earlier. Come on, little piggy. One-eyed little piggy. Be good and play. Just buzz them, will ya? Lady Sophia's in a hurry. It's like, no, no, please. And then the other girl's like, you're such a dick. And then they zzz, zzz, And then they zap him around the neck. And then you see, you like to talk with those who can, you know. Some of your kind don't speak human too well. It's like, ugh, ugh. Nothing but those rutting grunts. He's just like banging against the jail cell wall. Sometimes I fuck with them with this cattle prod so they make a better sound. Maybe you'll make that sound. So get ready. Your night is going to be very long. And then she says, open. One month ago. Open. Open. Will you just stop? It's like, no, I won't. They're going to put a collar on you. You remember what that was like, don't you? This is different, like Constantine. You remember that, don't you? All I know is that I wasted a bunch of money on a lock you can't open, even after a week of staring at it. Your plan seems ill-advised, young Micah. If you escape the Kumeya, I know that personally. <laughs> you have talking two-tailed cats. Oh, man. To quote the poets, I don't like poetry. Liar. You see Micah outside and on this wagon... You know, there's this uh, tan-looking tomcat with two twails kind of like spiraling together. Stop following us. I don't like strange cats. I never know what your kind want. Maybe orphans seek other orphans. Maybe the night is cold. Maybe we're all refugees. Or maybe I just like a mystery. <laughs> Mike is like, you talk too much. Go away or else I'll have Tuya set her eagle on you. He goes, eagles don't eat cats. Eagles will eat cats. Eagles will eat anything if they're hungry enough. We all do. Here's something the poets say. There's more hunger in the world than love. When we were slaves, we knew endless hunger. What I feel now is worse. Why can't I stop it? Why don't I want to? You see a grrr sound as a bunch of very, very tall hyenas that surround her. You see a grrr, snuff, gruff. And then she just sneaks up on them and goes, Look at you. 
so red. And then she chases him all the way. She says, you're going, don't, don't run. And she just kills them all. When we were slaves and starving, we once ate the contents of a dead boy's stomach. We said it wasn't like eating the boy, but now I know the truth. And she cuts open one of the hyenas and takes its heart and eats it. And she's crying as she does. It was open. Come on, open. Open, 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 open. Please don't let them take my soul. Please don't let them take my soul. They can't take your soul, Kippa. No witch can do that. He's right. They'll just take other things, like your pretty ears and your fine tail. They'll use you for parts. They'll torture you. Eventually you'll be dead. And your corpse will make their lilium. Look. And then she goes, <gasps> and the, he looks, he's this a really old, scraggly man few broken teeth, you know, fangs sticking out of his mouth. He shows her the stump of an arm that's been taken off. He goes, my head is next. I should just give it to them now. You all should die right now before they come for you. He goes, don't listen to him. No, listen, listen. I'll do it for you. I'll save you. I'll break these bars and take your head before they can. I'm strong. I'll save. And he goes, mm, you. I'll say, <clears throat> he's just slamming his head into the bars. He goes, no, stop, stop. He's like, little fox and bird, keep your ears covered. And then you just see him, uh, and then open. He's like, fuck. You two start cleaning that mess. And don't throw away the body. Lady Sophia might have some use for it. I'll take the next winner. And you see a cute little fox girl, you know, curled up holding her tail. She goes, no. Oh, yes. Now get up or be dragged. Either way, you're leaving that cell. And then Micah speaks up and says, No, she's not. You're going to take me, you disgusting, miserable, filthy pig. And then she grabs Micah's chain and goes, Change of plan, boys. Bring the fox to Lady Sophia. I have other work to do. So he starts zapping her with the electricity. She goes, Ugh. Like, hey, let's hear you mouth off again. It's like, this is, ah! It's like, Kippa, don't fight them. It's like, let me go. You feel that cold? Like the temperature just dropped? Don't pass out quite yet. I need to know if you're strong enough to take one more little one. She goes, fuck you. Hmm? Was that a yes? And she goes, ah! And she just zaps her again. And then you hear, ah! And then a wrench! And an irk! And you see next panel is the jailer lady just goes flying, is slammed into the back wall. And you see the jail cell doors are broken off, just crushing her against the wall. She just goes, finally. It's like, oh, goddess. It's like, what the hell? It's like, my collar. My collar is gone. It's like, she killed a bad woman. It's like, don't look, Kippa. She did it with her mind. She... She saved me. It's a witch trick. The trick where they rip off her cell doors and kill their own people? Shut up. How did she do it? How do you know it was her? Is she dead? Micah's like, not yet. You all need to leave, right now. If you don't, you're not getting out. Sounds good to me. Fuck that, we're in the middle of a Kamiya stronghold. Might as well go back to our cells. You go back, I'd rather die. Which is built on top of ruins. Should be tunnels that still run into old city or sewers. Aren't you coming with us? I'm not trying to escape. Come on, hurry. But what about her? She saved us. I don't know that. And even if she did, if she doesn't want to leave, there's nothing to be done. So they all run off with Micah just laying there, tears streaming down her face. Then she gets up slowly and you know, composes herself. And she sees the armory that's right behind her. And turns out Kippa still decided to stay behind. 
then you see or in a lab laboratory you see uh, Sophia and the other one you know experimenting you see a bunch of jars filled with brains and other kinds of animals and other bits he goes did you read this evening's bulletin Sophia that Arcanic warlord is rumored to be building more airships Titan class hmm yes and dissidents were caught trying to smuggle colored Arcanics from Federation territory that's the second time this month uh-huh terrible you don't sound very worried I was like wait 200 grams this Ilium engineering elective is disgusting I should have taken Neurocraft instead it's a distraction from my research and my work is the reason you're here isn't it one of the reasons the Federation isn't ready for another war if the Arcanics attack, not even we Chameans could stop them. We're still weak, and our novices are young. And then Sophia's like, soft and naive, you mean. And you see the little Cyclops boy from before, strapped to a table. His head's been cut off and placed to the side. You know, they've cut him open to harvest his organs. Those young ladies finish burying those renders and get out. Lab is dismissed for the day. And you, I suppose it's time for you to explain your other reason for being here. I'm sure you can guess. I was supposed to bring you and your mother back to the council. Of course you are. And how are you going to manage that? By asking nicely. Ha! Huh. Me, that's one thing. But my mother? As far as the council is concerned, she's long dead. For good reason, in my opinion. Wishful thinking, but they're not that stupid. It's only a matter of time before the war begins again. They need you both, even if your mother is unpredictable. Fuck them. Sophia, sending me was a nicety. You don't want them dispatching an inquisitrix. I feel sorry for the inquisitrix. Please, either you compel your mother to obey or the council will. Something's wrong. We're in danger. My ladies, Arcanics have escaped from all holding cells in sections 1, 2, and 3. We're dealing with a firefight in the lower level. We want all Kamiya under lockdown for their protection. Can't you feel it? Can't you hear the screaming? Sophia, focus. Tell me what you can see. Maybe you can. Wait, what are you? Don't siphon. I've felt this before. Sophia, stop. The guards are protecting us. We're not in danger. And then you see Sophia's grabbing on super tight. Her eyes have started glowing red. She goes, no, Sophia, the council forbids morphosis. I've heard those screams in Constantine. So goes, stop it. Not again. Not again. She's panting. goes, ah, ah, ah. stay there. Stay calm. I'm I'm getting help. She goes, no, don't open. You hear, ah, And the guard comes back in. Micah comes in with a gun and she goes, Lady Sophia, you and I need to talk. It won't take long. Sophia's like, you fucking animal. It's a guy. We're going to skin you alive. So I think we should negotiate. You know what? Never mind talking. <laughs> she just opens up with a flamethrower and she's like, it was you. It was you, wasn't it? I can feel it. That brand on your... It's like, yes. She sets Sophia on fire. It's like, I like you better on fire. You can't kill me that easily. Do you know who I am? It's like, a witch. Witches all burn the same. And she just incinerates her into a little black crisp. And the other one, oh, did they tell us what her name was? Just give me a second, everyone. I'm just going to quickly check and see if... Ah, Atina. So Atina is just is like, you, and she grabs a sword. It's about to cut her, and Micah's like, don't. Give me that knife. He's like, how? Looks like your hand is full. Bitch, put it on the ground, move to the wall. And then Sophia behind her is just slowly crawling. Micah turns around with a shink, just stabs her with a bayonet. She goes, what do you want? One simple answer to a very simple question. She goes, where is she? Tina's like, I don't, 
and Sophia throws the knife through her shoulder, rushes up and grabs and stabs it through her. She goes, I won't ask again. It's like, ah! Sniff, sniff. She smells the blood and is like, Miss, are you still alive in there? It's like, more or less. Like, what are you doing here, you little fox? And she grabs the sword and just puts it all the way through her and kills her. Like, I followed you. I thought it would be safer. You're good at killing. She goes, carry those weapons for me. It looks like Micah's starting to grow some fur on her face. She goes, I'm not a fool. Guards don't usually pour my tea and hover outside my door. You and the others act like hens before a cleaver. And I assume this is Sophia's mother and she's got a you know, burn scar like Zuko on half of her face. It's nothing, my lady. A minor disturbance. The full mean moon always brings out the worst brings the worst out of the Arcanics. You know, this is, the goddess be damned, my daughter must be outdoing herself tonight. Or is this part of your lunar disturbance? She goes, please excuse me, my lady. I need to check with the others. Whatever happens, I must ask you not open that door to anyone but us. It's like, do I ever? It's like, hmm. And she gets up out of the chair, and then you hear a thud behind her. And the card's head comes rolling in. And Micah's like, I didn't want to kill her, but she insisted. Yvette Low Limb, it's been a long time. I buried that name years ago. Buried it dead. I don't know you. Then look harder. She's like, Micah? Micah Half-Wolf. No, I could never forget you. Or your mother. You see, one month ago, Micah's taking, you know, a bath in the river after she killed the coyotes. She's washing away the tears. She goes and sits next to Tulsa. She goes, the priests say they're the ghosts of dead gods, but I don't believe they're ghosts. And you see this absolutely enormous, monstrous looking creature. You know, it looks almost like a colossal titan. It's got uh, shoulder pads, like armored shoulder pads, and what looks like gauntlets on its arms, or at least it might be like half mechanical. It's got three eyes in the center of his head and kind of like a hooked uh, beak. It's like not after Constantine. Sometimes I can't believe that day ever happened. It happened. Just ask the 146,000 who died. And the creature, whatever it is, turns around and just starts walking away and fades into the mist. It's like, come on, let's go back to camp. Micah's like, I've got enough ghosts in my life. I guess you got tired of fiddling with that lock. It's like, what are you talking about? And she points back to the thing, and the lock is just completely broken up and ripped apart. And you see a picture of Yvette Low Limb, and you see Micah's mother, and Micah's a child. I looked for you after her death, Micah. Years I searched. You should have scoured your own slave camps. Ah, that is not the fate I expected. Not for the daughter of Moriko Halfwolf. She goes, don't say her name. Throws her to the ground. Do uh, be careful. I'm an old woman. We break easily. Then break. Ha, come sit down. You look weary, my child. Have you eaten? You look famished. Shut up. I want to know about my mother and what you all were doing in the desert when she was murdered. You came all this way, all these years, risked everything, just ask me that? No, I don't think so. You're too desperate, like your soul depends on it. She just slashes her face, and she goes, Answer me, or the breaking starts. She goes, You want a story, darling? I'm full of them. Yours is simple. I knew your mother before the war, when the Federation and Arcanic still tolerated one another, when some of us still made friends and families with each other, before certain decisions sent that world to hell. Your mother reached out for my expertise. She was searching for the tomb of the Shaman Empress. She wasn't the first, and she wasn't the last, but your mother had more insight than most, and I had access to research she needed. More importantly, she had the backing of a great power, 
we became colleagues. It was a uh, thrilling time. I knew you not long after you were born, but things changed as they were wont to do in this life, and certain people got hurt. I'm sorry you were one of them. And the tomb? Why did you want to find it? Power, of course. Surely you know your history. The shaman empress was the most powerful arcanic who ever lived, and she was a science master of the highest order. She created technology and magics that would make us look like we're living in the Dark Ages. And she buried it with her, that bitch. There is no government, no general, no mercenary, no captain of industry who doesn't covet her tomb. My kind, your kind, it doesn't matter. Your mother was sent by her warlord to uncover the shaman empress's resting place. We failed in that, but we found something else. At least your mother did. Something unexpected. Something wondrous. Do you still have your piece of it? She gave it to you. She must have it. it wasn't on her body. And you see her just make an absolutely horrific face. And you see again, you know, her mouth is just like full of sharpened teeth. That's why you're here, isn't it? You've tasted that power and it's changing you. I can help you. But you need to help me, young half-wolf. Tell me where you hid it. You hear scree, scree sound. The guards must have found whoever you killed to reach me. You don't have much time. Give me what I need and I'll send them away. Whatever you're looking for went with my arm. You can thank your sister kind for that. I don't want your help. You killed my mother. You betrayed her. My darling... Your mother's betrayal of you was far greater than any harm I ever did to her. Miss, such a confused young woman. Let me show you something that will answer at least one of your questions. And maybe mine as well. Come and see what your mother found. Someone's in there. I can, I can hear breathing. It's like, oh. And she takes her into a secret back door. You see a birdcage with... What well, looks like a little child in there. Ah, oh, God, that's harsh. You see a little child with arms cut off and bandaged. He goes, no, no, please don't hurt me. Please don't eat any more of me. I'll be good. I'll be so good. I promise. Just don't take any more. He goes, whiner. What does he have to do with my mother? Him? Nothing at all. Unless you need a snack. She opens up what looks like an Iron Maiden, and a purple light comes out. She goes, Ugh, it's like, Yvette, aren't you overwhelmed? My daughter designs this deterrent. It's Lilium, but of exceptional concentration. Harvested from one of your pure blooded ancients. Our archaeologists discovered records that led them to the grave, on our side of the wall, no less. He's like, please do brace yourself, darling. And she takes out a sword. She's about to slash it down. And Micah goes, you won't need your other arm for the rest of this interview. And Micah headbutts her and slams her into the thing. She goes, impossible. No arcanic is immune to Lilium. Unless and you hear crack as she hits her. And she goes, Kruf, I knew it the moment I saw you. You've used <laughs> your piece of the mask, haven't you? And you... <laughs> hear his voice what does he say what does and Micah just come chokes her out and kills her he goes Zzz. Micah just rips the cords out of the device she goes come on stand up He's like, is it over it's like no we need to find a way she goes open He's like no 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 not that voice it's like what don't look at it. Stay here with him. She goes back to the device. And she sees the, another part of the mask. And behind her you see you know, one of the eyes from what looks like one of the creatures. Just staring at her. And he goes, Miss, I locked the d door before but the g guards are starting to burn it. Like, we need to find another way out. I think I already have. It's like, I smell water. And there are steps carved into the stone. 
No lights. It's okay, I can see in the dark. Let lead the way. And she goes into the fireplace. It opens up a secret door. And Micah's like, I'll be right behind you. And you see her looking at a picture, you know, the picture she saw earlier. And there's someone else to the other side, what looks like a kid like her, what looks like he's a half fish one. And she goes, fuck. It's like, miss. And so she takes off out of the city. He's like, we have to hurry. I can hear them. We're close. We're close to where my friends. Ugh. And she trips and falls like, yeah. Are you okay, miss? It's it's nothing. And then I think her voice and goes, girl, come here. I need you. It's like, you what? It's like, Don't go near her. It's like, run. It's like, no, wait. It's like, eep. It's like, what's wrong with you? And she grabs her tail and pulls her back. It's like, nothing is wrong, girl. I just hunger. And you see her face starting to transform. You know, starting to go a little bit green. She goes, ah. It's like, run. It's like, don't come near me. And it's like, I'm, I'm not a monster. It's like, no. No, I'm not. Tuya, help. Help me. <laughs> And she's, okay, she's trying to reach for the bag. The mask has come out. And the cat from earlier is sitting in the tree. And he's like, to quote the poets, we're fucked. <laughs> that is just the greatest, the greatest thing ever. Chapter two. Okay, I wish I could show you like some of the exceptional artwork in this book and I wish you know I could kind of describe it better I will post a thread on uh, Twitter tomorrow with some of the panels and some kind of some of my thoughts but it is gorgeous Just take my word for it so we have investigation report read the Zamora massacre the city of Zamora is located within the truce lands between the human federation and the arcanic realms Moreover, the Kumean chapter House of Zamora is one of the oldest in the Federation. It is said to be located in the exact spot where Mariam received her first wound. And you see some guards rushing in and goes, Oh goddess, they're really here. How can this be happening? We didn't do anything wrong. They, they took us by surprise. Lucky we made it back inside the chapter house. Put down your weapons, you idiots. We'll only make it worse. Please don't let them take me alive. Here are the facts as we know them. It's like, I won't. I won't let them take you. And then this zaps him dead. It's like, stop. All of you, stop. You're, ah! And a boom. The inner gate of the compound of Tricentine, Tricentine Relic, blessed by Mother Superior Benicia the f uh, yeah, the fourth, was destroyed through the clear use of arcanic magics, the likes which have not been witnessed since the last holy war. God, okay, this is like, uh, three new characters that are going to become my absolute favorites. The Mother Superior's personal coven of Inquisitrixes attended the investigation and corroborates this finding of the forensic team. Please find attached their report. And you see just these three absolutely badass ladies, one with what looks like throwing knives. You know, one dressed in like a headdress cowl with a giant sword and one that's got her face fully covered with what I assume is a giant hammer or a giant axe of some kind, some kind of giant weapon. <sighs> yes, it's just, I'm so pumped, I'm so pumped. The violence committed against the brave members of our order can only be described as obscene. And the late new ladies that came in, oh, okay, it's not a cowl, so the hair, she had like bangs in the hair and it looked like a cowl, but it was not. It's just her hair. And they're just killing all the guards. Full sweep, post guards outside Lady Yvette's chambers. The guards are like, please, ugh. And, oh, shit, yes. Oh man. 
So the giant lady is mute. So she's using sign language to communicate. So she's like, she goes, oh yes, make sure some of the wounds look eaten. Hack off a few limbs here and there. Arcanics have never shown mercy to our kind. They are abominations who thrive off the anguish and suffering of their victims. Mercy is a concept wholly foreign to their foul intelligences. Their souls are contaminated with evil. Fortunately, there are two survivors who can bear witness to this clear violation of the truce. After reviewing the facts and hearing their testimony, we believe the Federation will have no choice but to declare this massacre an act of war. I don't know why I bothered wasting good Lilium on you, Sophia. The Inquisitrixes have come. Can you hear the screams? You should have returned with me to the Federation when you had the chance. Atina said, yes. You talk too much. They've covered up her burnt body, completely wrapped in bandages, and she's using a little bowl to kind of feed her the Lilium. She goes, shut up, you crazy bitch. <laughs> And then the Inquisitrix walks in and goes, Oh no, you. Well now, Lady Atina, such a pleasure to see you again. On your feet this time too. The guards put down your weapons. Don't fight her, damn it. I'm not dying. You're already dead. And just a beautiful sequence of panels. As she goes, you know, slashes and kills the guards within seconds. Lops all the head off. Lady Atina, you look nearly like yourself. Those new Lilium bombs really do work miracles on scars, don't they? But just look at what they do to one's hair. Do to one's hair. My Lady Inquisitrix, it is an honor to be in your presence. I beg the most favored mercy of your benevolence. You'll be begging for more than that, I'm afraid. Business first, however. The Mother Superior herself has come for Lady Yvette. Where is she? Dead. And the mask? What mask? Ah. What a fool I was. Now I know why you stayed away from me all these years. Why you remained among the savages. And you see another lady with a, like, kind of like an eagle mask, you know, with two... Offset's coming off. Uh, she's wearing what looks like she's got a black feather, I think, cloak. Uh, with one end having like white feathers with an outer red circle and a black inner circle. She goes, Atra. So, Lady Sophia purchased a slave girl. A girl with the mark of the eclipsing eye upon her chest. A girl who promptly breaks free of her unbreakable collars. Steals sacred property, which not a vineyard in the first place and also manages to murder a senior member of our order. Such an intriguing show of strength. A tracking party was sent after our thief, and I sent your sisters after them. Let us hope that will be enough to bring down this wild child. See, Lady Atina, my daughter's discovered a significant amount of Lilium within these chambers and in Lady Sophia's lap. Pure Lilium from an ancient, no less, in full contravention of the Treaty of Orleans. Most Holy Mother, I can only assume that the, Il that the Lilium used in Lady Sophia's research was approved by the highest Ecleons of the Council. I seriously doubt that. Still, its presence is fortuitous. Yvette simply cannot stay dead. Mother Superior, for temporary reanimation to work, the body must be prepared and the Lilium modulated. The process will take a week at least, and the effects rarely last longer than a minute. Lady Sophia is the only one who... Lady Sophia is unfortunately occupied with, with being a roast. Have faith, Atina, the goddess always finds a way, especially for her most revered servants. And so she's caught in a syringe of the Lilium, and she takes it to her mouth, and she whispers something to it. And slams it right into the middle of Yvette's chest and plunges it in. And she goes, Ah! Guards, please restrain our newly resurrected Yvette. And she's like muttering in some foreign language. And Atina's like, What the fuck? She goes, How astonishing. And then 
Uh, Yvette just plunges up and starts biting the guard. It was my daughter's. Go find your sister. The all-mother knows she may need help with a remarkable arcanic thief. I'll handle Yvette's interrogation myself. She has much to answer for. And you see, two weeks ago, you're flashing back to Micah again. Tomorrow I leave for Zamora, but tonight we drink. I'm glad this isn't a place for talking or farewells. Micah, there's something I need to tell you. It looks like they're in a tent, and there's two Oni wrestling in the background. Ty Tuya is saying something, but I cannot hear her. Take her down, you've almost got her. It's like, I don't want to hear her. Like, yeah, one of the Oni. <laughs> I should mention they are two female Oni, which is awesome. And one of them gets tossed out of the ring. It's like, not tonight. Who will challenge me? It's like, every night. So Micah steps into the ring. And these are the Sith people. They follow the fleet herds from the Caracol Mountains to the Cape of Bull. You hear Chad going, half wolf, half wolf. Strong, independent. They bring me information. They respect me. Some of them fear me. They marvel at my strength. Sometimes I do too. I just grab the Oni woman and tossed her out. I know almost nothing about myself. I don't know who I am. All I know is that I've seen death herself, that I survived. I know that I once had a mother. I was like, why are you so angry? It doesn't matter anymore. Tuya thinks I'm insane to keep searching for answers. Sometimes my head goes dark for months. All she says is that I've gone back to the war. She doesn't know about the dreams, where I murder her, burn the wagon, burn the wagon kill myself. She doesn't know about the hunger. During the war, I thought surviving would be enough. But surviving is the easy part. I want her to say something, but I guess she said everything she needs to. I leave at dawn while she sleeps. The moon will stay full for another three weeks. I pray it helps. I don't feel sad or frightened. I feel angry and something else I can't name. She comes awake with a gasp, and then she wakes up in a wagon of uh, what looks like sacks of potatoes around her. She goes, ah, good, you're finally awake. To quote the... <laughs> this cat is my favorite character. To quote the poets, murder is terribly exhausting. Did you know the woman holding you in the photograph bears an uncanny resemblance to the sword of the East herself? Now that I think about it, you are also... <laughs> so Micah grabs one of the cat's tails and goes, Give me the photograph. Give it to me or I'll kill me. Kill you. You'll kill me? You can barely move. It's like, and then I could just collapse. And, Ugh. and then, um... And was it Kippa? He goes, what? Have they found us? We're safe for now, Kippa. Micah's being dramatic, that's all. All you had to do was ask. <laughs> Cat pushes the thing into her face. He goes, what are you doing here? Last time I saw you was on the other side of the wall. Hey now, everything right and good back there? <sighs> See the merchant's got, you know, her baby on a sling. She's on to a... Uh, cradle to her as she's uh, driving the wagon. No fight in my wagon, please. These are nice eats. I need to sell. Can't have you damaging them. Our deepest apologies, Mistress Amelia. Your kindness has already been without measure and is matched only by your grace. Oh, you cats. It's like the mask. And then Kip, I was like, don't touch me. Don't touch me. It's like, who said this was yours? Don't touch me. Master Ren made me carry it for you, but I didn't want to, I didn't want, I didn't want to. It hurt my hand. It's cursed. You can feel it. Like, leave her be. And then the cat speaks to her in another language. It goes, the child doesn't speak Hanuk, but you do. What do I care what she hears or understands? Because she's frightened enough and my friend Amelia is only human. So, you risked your life. You slayed, you burned, you may have started a war. 
all for that obscene object. I promise you, it wasn't worth it. I didn't go to that place for this thing. I didn't go to that place for this. But it's something important, something the witch nun valued, something that changed her. Of course it changed her, if she had it long enough. That is an artifact from the lost age wrought of blasphemous materials, poisonous to all living creatures. Even the child felt the danger of it. The trinket will get you executed on both sides of the wall by human and arcanic authorities alike. All will be devoured. No arcanic can touch it without burning, though it seems you enjoy pain. I would advise you not to handle it long. If it taints you, it will warp your form, even your soul. The poets say, and not even the most corrupt arcanic will come near you. You will be an outsider forever, so it is written. She looks off to the side, side and she again imagines the eye and like, you know, a bunch of hair and fur coming out from the side of looking at her. Because what makes you an expert? I make it my business to know many things. You should bandage your hand. The child was injured. I'm fine. I didn't feel any pain. Maybe you're a liar, cat. Maybe you're here for what's in this bag. Everyone knows you're kinder, thieves. Ah, yes, the casual bigotry of fools. We have, oof. Where did you think you'd run, Micah? You are in the true slants between the Human Federation and the silent realm of the Arcanic. Here, there's only danger for one such as you. Leave me the fuck alone. Oh, is it? Oh, is that the cat? And then there's a bunch of cows around her, and the cat jumps onto them. Alas, if only I could. Come on, miss. I can't imagine what you've been through, but you're safe with me. I might be human, but I'm a daughter of Eden, you see. We Edenites don't hold with the hate the Federation preaches. She's like, I'm surprised there are any Edenites left at all, then. Tuya was supposed to be here. We had a plan. Plans change. I'm here in her place. I don't believe you. She thought you'd say that. <laughs> the cat reaches into his pocket and pulls out a jewel. She goes, there wasn't room for your wooden arm. And it's a blue jewel. She goes, tell me what she said when she gave you this. She said, I won't be here when she comes back. This is an old lumber track. Not many use it, but better not to linger if we don't have to. The real problem is up ahead. It's all part of the wild wall, but settled by humans now. Arcanics were promised in the treaty that they could stay or were driven out by human settlers or worse. There's a secret compartment in the bottom of the wagon. Mike and little Kippa should slide inside. Master Ren, you better hide your tail and act catty. Kind of hides his tail and goes, Meow. So he's like, Get in. No, I don't want to be alone with you. Not in the dark. There's no time for this. I don't care. I know what I saw. I know what you did to him. Him? The boy. The boy with no hands. Ah, you'd forgotten him already. Where is he? Tell me. He's dead. You ate him. It's like Flay was already here. Even if she hadn't left a note, there are sunflower shells everywhere. Fucking slob. So what is this? Did the Arcanic burn him to death? So you see the little blue haired child that she rescued from Yvette has turned into a husk. He's got little claw marks, you know, one on his face, one on his uh, chest and arms and legs. And the, uh, the mute uh, Inquisitrix uh, goes like this and signals with her arm claws like this and he goes, Impossible. No way was she killed using infernal energy. The whole forest would be gone. Are you absolutely certain, Hammer? <laughs> Love that they're at least using a very simplified name. And she said, but Needle, trust your sister. You were not a Constantine, but she was. All right. So the main one of the trio with the bangs, kind of like form a arrow in the middle is needle 
the mute one with the giant weapon is hammer and the throwing hype one we have yet to get a name for so you see the uh, oh, some of the uh, as they're going along they come up on some men once taking a whiz on a tree Goes, whoa there hold up we got a man undone here he's like ha ha so you should have gone to the compartment no matter what foolishness the child said it's safer a door closed door raises suspicions an open one doesn't which is to say fuck it I'm not hiding maybe you think that's brave but it's selfish puts us all at risk well if it isn't the brother's bell looks like you both had a good day in the woods that we did, Amelia. We'll keep some venison aside for you if you can spare a bag of those potatoes I know you're hauling. It's like, that's a bargain I'd be happy with. And who's this? My cousin here to help with the baby. Caught up in the war when she was a child, so she doesn't talk much. You know how it is with the wounded. She doesn't look like you, Amelia. True, our daddy was never the same after what the Arcanids did to him. I remember the last girl who was seen in your company. Didn't look much like you either, and she disappeared a day later. Samuel, that was just a child I fed for a night. No relation, she ran off quick. I guess I just hope you're not mixed up with that old Eden Act shit again. Them and their salvation road to the other side of the wall. I know you sympathize with arcanic animals, but we pray for humans and arcanics to be at peace again as it was in the garden of old. It wasn't so long ago, was it? My boys, your granddaddy had a brother who married an arcanic woman and she minded you both when you were children. My grandfather was a blasphemer and traitor to his race. Even when the Federation takes over these lands and you see one of the other brothers gone to untie the dogs. He goes, enough of that, Hamas. Sorry, Amelia, but all uh, settlements are supposed to be on watch for arcanics. An alarm has gone up from the city. Soldiers are coming in the next day or so. Anyone we don't know needs to be tested, either with a moon scope or by dog. Friends or not, Amelia, it's the law. Won't take but a minute. See the Rager to say hello. And then <laughs> Micah just gives them the death glare and the dogs are like, arr, arr. It's like, look, look at them. They're afraid of my potatoes. Gruff, gruff, gruff. Something's out there, Samuel. Something that ain't sitting on that wagon bench. Like, rough, rough. rough. Like, That's right. I used to say. <laughs> oh my god, this cat continues to be the absolute best. So he's gone off into the woods and he's hiding behind a tree. And he's insulting the dogs. That's right. I used to sex both your mothers and fathers, you worthless mangy. He's like, I'll be on my way then. Next time you need to question my honesty, Samuel Bell, just come to my home. And you, Hamus, I hope one day you can find peace. And so she whispers, we'll keep going until we'll clear the settlements. You were supposed to be here, Tuya. But you knew, didn't you, that I wouldn't listen, that I would do what I wanted to do. The truth is, you were right to leave. I can't be trusted. Not even with you. But maybe you knew that too? So Micah takes off after they have unsaddled for the night. And she takes running off in the woods. And she again imagines that eye, you know, surrounded in the hair. Or uh, looking like, a lot like Cousin It. You're a dream. You're nothing. Just leave me. Alone. And the cat's just waiting for her. Licking his paw. He's like, do you ever stop running? Or would that require you to be too much with yourself? You don't know shit, cat. The girl was right. I killed that boy. I don't remember doing it, but it was me. And it's not the first time. I call it the hunger. I don't know what it is, how to stop it. I thought I would find answers in Zamora. Questions only got bigger. Don't they always, little thief? And you see someone else has shown up with the hood. Looks like one of the other Inquisitrixes. And she's got a sword. And she goes, and I have a great many questions for you. 
Inquisitrix, be warned. I am Commander Ren Mor Mormorian Apprentice Necromancer. <laughs> Necromancer. To the great and ancient two-faced Zorian of White Claw House. I have raised the ancient dead. I have fought the Wraithmen of the Forsaken Forest. Cross me at your own peril. <laughs> and she just pulls out her sword and responds. And he's just starting to sweat. He's like, you can't blame a cat for trying. He goes, flee! And runs away. <coughs> Excuse me, I just need some water. You see, so you can run, is that it? Run faster than any normal human, but not faster than me. And she corners her and lunges and stabs the tree behind her. Michael slips to the side and hits her with the stump of her hand. Ugh. You've had training, it seems, just not enough. And she pulls out a whip with her other hand and grabs her leg. She goes, my whiskers wants you alive, but only if you have the mask. Let's have a glance, why don't we? So Micah pulls out the mask and starts transforming. And she goes, oh. And the mask has transformed. So her arm, on her arm is like this mass of what looks like feathers, you know, with eyes and things coming out. It's very hard to describe. I'll try to post a picture on uh, Twitter next on Twitter tomorrow. But there's like when I was describing that creature earlier, like the Titan with the uh, gauntlets and armor on it. This looks very much like that, but you know, more flared out at the ending. It looks insanely cool, though. So we have an excerpt of a lecture from the esteemed Professor Tam Tam, former purse record keeper of the Ishami Temple and learned contemporary of Nemron Blackclaw. Today we continue, and is a four-tailed cat, today we continue our study of the known world with a discussion of the ancient trade city of Zamora Atta, now known as Zamora. Founded less than 500 years after the death of the gods, Zamora Atta was once little more than a stable campground for human and arcanic traders crowding the long road across the continent. Human caravans from as far as the burned coast would stop on their way to the Arcanic realms and Arcanic convoys, even those from northern Archangelus, would take the rest along the Zamora Atta River. Listen, you kids, traders were once the true ambassadors of our disparate realms. They traded more than mere spice and glass and cloth. They passed between each other in music and poetry and books. They gave each other ideas and religion and technology. They created lasting friendships that were shared and inherited just like blood. Zamorata became, became great because of such friendships. The city grew upon the bones of that trust and became an example for others. The Edenite city of Pontus would not exist without Zamorata, nor would Orlean or even Theria. Alas, this golden age of exchange and contract is no, of contact is no more. Our world has become divided. On one side is the Federation of Man and their communion allies. On the other stand the Arcanic Realms. Zamor Atta, the borderland city that once held these races together, a crossroads of all our cultures, is now the site of intrigue, suspicion, and brewing war. Many believe it will become a flashpoint that precedes the next conflict. All its monuments to friendship are long forgotten. We have Chapter 3. We have, oh, that feels good. And a bunch of what looks like tentacles or snakes or something come whipping out of her arm. She goes, demon, I can feel the night on my skin. And she swings her sword down and it goes crunching and just shatters on the tentacle hair or whatever that's come out of her and she goes yeah I've slept too long the tentacles just go and rip her arm off and I have not felt and you hear a dink as an ilium the vial falls out so alive in a thousand years and the arm 
Alright, just give me a second here so you can plug my computer in so it does not run out of battery. There we go. Alright. And so you see the arm just start to wither just like what uh, we saw with the child earlier. And it goes, but who are you? It's like, no, this is not happening. Why do I already know your face? It's like, leave me alone. It's like, hmm, this will not do. The mask should still not exist. As for you, you will let me go. You will let me sleep. And the tentacles just slam her down. She goes, wham, and eat. A shame. You let a good meal get away. And so the thing picks up the vial, crunches it in his hand, and Hume drinks up uh, the ilium. He goes, now I am tired again, and I feel so strange. I can almost imagine you understand what I am saying. So it just withdraws back into her arm, go back into the stump again. And you see, I can't begin to tell you what an unneeded distraction this is, Yvette. These are precarious days in the Federation. The new Prime Minister requires my constant guidance. See, Yvette's just got like a... Uh, not almost like... almost like a Hannibal Lecter mask stuck on her face. And the, inquis the head inquisitrix is questioning her. And as for this old friend, you claim this is the daughter of Moriko Halfwolf? Moriko's daughter died. We were shown a body burned beyond recognition, like your unfortunate daughter. And yet my daughter lives, Destria, as does Micah. Her death was a lie. I always knew it. Moriko would have killed a thousand girls to keep her daughter safe. She killed at least a dozen before that night just so Micah wouldn't need to be part of the experiment. Moriko never did leave anything to chance. And Destria's like, we should be more like her. Gaze upon Zamora, Yvette, the most ancient city of the Truce Lands. Soon all this will be Federation territory, and Zamora will be a stronghold for the Comia. As long as the Arcanics do not acquire the whole mask, they must already possess a part of it. Uh, there's no other way they could have destroyed Constantine. No reports from your Inquisitrix guard, Most Holy Mother. And Destria, Destria is like, Their silence troubles me. No girl should have eluded them. And Yvette's like, As I said, this is no ordinary girl. I can feel that fragment of the mask, Destria. It continues to move away from us. Give my daughter the Lilium she needs to stay alive, and I'll deliver it and the half-wolf. Poor, poor Yvette. Don't you realize that fragment will never be yours again? What made you think you could control it in the first place? Only an arcana can wield that power, and you're a daughter of Eden through and through. You're human. We were all changed that night. I, by choice, gladly, utterly, divinely, but I, but you, Destry is like, how I was changed is not to be discussed, ever. And Yvette's like, I don't know, but she's even more terrible than Moriko. And Destry is like, I doubt that. And a little bird landed on her finger, and she just grabs the next one and crushes it with a whee. Yes, I doubt it too. And then I was dead. <laughs> and then we go back to Micah. And she goes, show yourself, motherfucker, or I will tear, I will tear you the fuck out of me. Oh, she's talking to the demon in her arm. She's like, Micah, what are you doing? Nothing, cat. Mind your own fucking business. This is my business. Where's the Inquisitrix? I, I don't know. Gone, I think. That's true only if she's dead. Don't tell me you were able to kill her. No, but I scared her. Ah, hurry, we have to return to camp. Soldiers have found Amelia and, Nip and Kippa, I can hear it. You're not coming? They're no one to me. 
cat just glares at her. You started to tell me something in these woods about how you murdered a boy and others, how you hunger and don't know why. I know what the hunger is. The cat takes off. Mike is just like, don't lie to us. The men said, oh no, sorry, uh, the guards. Don't lie to us. The man said you were traveling with a girl, a girl who has only one arm. How is it a lie if I don't know where she went? I was asleep when you found me. Those fool men are the worst kind of troublemakers. Your Arcanic was definitely here, Da Chang. The dogs can scent the beast, maybe more than one. Like this way. And you see Kippa just running away and she goes to the river. And she's stripped off, she's bathing in the river and she goes, No scent, be invisible. No scent, be invisible. Do you hear? No! Give me back my baby. It's like, Savannah, bring us your bayonet. It's like, no, please. And place it right here, blade up right here where my foot is. It's like, Da Chang, what? It's like, do it. And you hear the big one, wah, wah. And she places the bayonet there. Oof. So the child is just levitating right above the bayonet. And Judge Chang like, so, do you have anything to tell me now? And so the girl's gone and gotten a thorn. And she, uh, Kippa's gone and gotten a thorn. She comes back and she whips it at the horses. She goes, oh, run. It's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And then the horses start running away. And then Judge Chang's like, damn it, get those horses. And she just drops the child. Because the child wasn't levitating. She was holding her out with her hand, but you couldn't see the hand in the earlier panel. And the other guard knocks the bayonet out of the way and care, uh, grabs the child before it falls. And we like, sweetie. And the cat runs up with these huge claws, claws at her face and goes, Amelia, run! He's like, come on, come on, don't you want to play? And a bunch of other guards found Kippa. And they grab her by the tail and she goes, God, she's like, no! And she lashes out with the thorny branch. And he goes, ah! And when Da Chang comes and kicks her, he's like, what? And then they see uh, the horse he's running out of there. He's got something, looks like it's something stuck in his head and is out of its mind. God, who are unicorns? Come on. <laughs> okay, all right. So the horses are unicorns and someone ripped off uh, one of the horse's horns. And that's why it drove mad. Like Someone tore off its horn. Sweet Miriam. <laughs> oh, shit. And then someone throws the horn and it takes the chang right through her throat. And then they shoot, oh, that was uh, Micah, through the horn, through her throat. Okay, so Micah was like riding side saddle on the horse and hiding, and she stabbed her with the horn as she was riding by. And the guard, the guard shoot the horse. You know, they capture Micah, and they go, crazy bitch. The Chang is dead, so is Savannah. The cat tore out her throat. So what do we do? It's like, yeah, we need to head back. We're too close to the wall and the moon is full. Oh, one of the guards has grabbed the mask. We need those horses. The slave collars are in the saddlebags. The lilium they're made with is more, th more than we are. We'll leave those out here. The commander will have our guts for our garters. And Kip was just like, Miss Monster? Wake up, miss. And so, Micah wakes up in, you know, what well, looks like a very Egyptian kind of inspired uh, tomb. So she's laying on a slab. You know, there's giant pillars uh, next to her and there's hieroglyphs on the wall surrounding her. And there's like a shining uh, kind of bright light. I think anyone that's, you know, played uh, Shadow of the Colossus, the game... Uh, the place where the main character keeps waking up in that kind of hallway, it looks a lot like that. And she goes exploring and she sees this giant mural of 
like someone very anubis looking you know with the kind of very big jackal ears and like a hook a giant hooked a beak and she sees you know the mask hanging in the middle between the, the, the creature it is described and the one she sees in her dream you know with the singular eye very cousin it looking kind of shape and the mask is kind of between them both and she's like what is this and then you see she sees her mother in the dream goes mother listen carefully Micah this is the name you must never forget and she whispers something in her ear forget my name before you forget this Micah's just like no and she has tears streaming down her face and she's and there's steps leading up to what looks like an altar with who I assume is the uh, first shamanist or high priestess and she's like mother and then the demon wakes up and like what are you doing inside me how dare you and then she wakes up she goes where are we where, where are all the soldiers like we're next to the wall miss the soldiers tracked their horses through a break and went into the maillands looking for them it's like you shut up it's like where are my things hey down on your knees it's like i asked you a question she kills the guard it's like we're gonna fucking die out here keep it together no way i'd rather face the commander than be crawling around arcanic territory they eat people I was like, these dogs have shit for noses. Where are the horses? Damn it, we're lost. Shut up, all of you. We push on just for a little longer. It's one of the guards went to wash her face in the river, and the cat came and stole the mask while she was distracted. And hammer, needle, and I'm just going to call the other one knives for now. I've shown up, and knives is like, how creative. Okay, so, Tong. Don't pretend, Tong. We know you hate people who hurt animals. <laughs> uh, I'm loving all these characters. The girl alone couldn't have done this, could she? What is it, Hammer? Uh, monstra. Monstra are free. The girl, she is. I saw her true form. So, the whip one that uh, Micah tore the hand off with. The demon, her name is flay so needles like tong take flay back to zamora hammer and i will finish the hunt micah's like micah's run off with uh, kip on her back and they're racing off on a horse he's like are you scared of me and kip was holding on to her she's crying she's like wiping away the tears like yes it's like we have that much in common i'm scared of me too it's like don't cry once i get by, back my belongings i'll leave you with amelia it's like where will you go miss when I was in the Kamehameha compound, I found a photograph that had my mother in it, and other people I don't remember. They were all together years ago looking for something, something that made me. So I'll go south to Tetheria. I know someone who might be able to tell me who else is in that photograph. So Kippa looks at her and then hugs her back, and she says, You shouldn't eat people. Micah goes, Look, little fox, does your family pray to them? And you see this giant, like, squid-looking creature, you know, with the tail. Like, you can see the tail. It looks very squid-like, again, with the three eyes. And it's got these wings coming out with eyes on them as well. I wish I could describe this better, but... It is just an insane panel, and like I said, I'll post these pictures on Twitter tomorrow, but god damn. And then Kippa's like, no, miss, but we left them offerings. It's like, miss, does it see us? He's like, no, the dead don't see. I have excerpt of a lecture from the esteemed Professor Tam Tam, former pressed recorder of the Ishami Temple and learned contemporary of Namron Black Claw. Even now the poets cannot agree on what for caused the first modern schism between the Federation of Man and the Arcanic Empire. It was to quote the necromancer Vakander, Ni Vakander Ninetale, 
like a series of claw pricks that bled the, that bled the cat slowly to death. One of those wounds, deeper than the rest, took place 300 years ago in Constantine, not long after the command order began its ascension as a true force within the Federation. A young witch nun began an illicit affair with an arcanic stone mason and bore a daughter who, much to her chagrin, looked a great deal like the father. The Kumeya are not virgins, but they are, but they are supposed to keep their blood pure. And even 300 years ago, at the end of the Enlightenment, the witch nuns had began to preach that our arcanics were unclean creatures. Rather than give the child to her arcanic father, the mother superior had her killed. Her corpse dumped into a box and left at the stonemason's door like trash. The young witch nun who bore that child was also executed. Outrage spread throughout the Arcanic Empire, from the Dusk Court to the Dawn Court, from Theria to Archangelus, a fury made worse by one last added insult. The Mother Superior was never punished for her crime. The Prime Minister of the Human Federation declared the murderers a religious decree and therefore outside the jurisdiction of the law. It set a dangerous precedent that the Kumea could behave as they wished within Federation territory without penalty or oversight. The Kumea took that privilege and power, and once taken, it was nearly impossible to wrest it from them. The later Prime Ministers made some small successful attempts. Clearly, it was not enough. Chapter 4 Oh man, we have another... So we have one wearing a black fox mask, swinging what looks like a spear, I'm guessing. And she goes, and the other goes, You're overreacting, my dear darling warlord, my gentle sword of the east. Damn you, I'm not a grave robber. I didn't steal those bones. No, I am not overreacting. Our time has run out. We don't have long before the Kumea convinced the Federation that the truce has been broken. Zamora is the perfect excuse to send an army into Arcanic lands instead of these bone thieves and child stealers. The massacre of Zamora is a Kumean lie. So I'm guessing this is the Arcanics that we're supposed to see. So they have a very Asian inspired, you know, kind of citadel, massive stone temples and the other one we saw the fox one seems to have like uh, multiple tails and so she's talking to one that has a wolf face she goes not every human in the federation is a fool or our enemy i have hope this will not turn against us hope won't save you from a cumian hacksaw O oh honored queen of wolves meg any word yet from the scouts no, my warlord, no eagles have returned, nor the talon of cats we hired. The dust court remains closed to us. Their silence is not yet broken. Cowards, hiding their army while the rest of us bleed for them. So we have a winged woman in the back, and one of her wings, half of them are shredded off on the one side. And you have, on the other side of the wolf queen, is an oni ogre-looking woman. Those fools will bleed too. Mark it, Aaliyah. The Federation and the Kumia will cut right through them on their way to us. Serves them right. No, we can't let that happen. We must fight for them even if they won't fight for us. Think of the Lilium the Kumia will reap after such a victory. More weapons, more enhancement serums. The Dust Court cannot fall, even if they're cowards. Look at you, pretending not to have a care in the world. How must it feel for you and the other ancients? For a thousand years your powers have faded. You're all weak, practically mortal. All you have left are the swords of your hybrid children. Children who died for you, thousands upon thousands of them. So that you can stand here today and continue pretending you're above it all. And you're not. You're meat like the rest of us. The ancestrals chose well when they marked you as our warlord, but that doesn't make you less a fool. You'd be wise to listen to this old piece of meat on one thing at least. Stop searching for what destroyed Constantine. Never. After that battle, our scouts found bodies for 50 miles in every direction. 
humans and archaenics dead where they stood, and for the next 50 miles many were burned and blinded. We have a stalemate because the Cumea believe we destroyed Constantine because they believe we have a weapon capable of murdering whole nations in the blink of an eye. It's only a matter of time before they realize we lied. Has it occurred to you that thing might be better left unfound? That it poses a risk greater to us than even the witch nuns? You should go now. Enjoy your tea. Im immortality does not improve on intelligence, I'm afraid. Ancients like our queen of wolves live narrow, sheltered lives. They have forgotten what the world was like when it was safe and free. It takes them. It makes them too cautious, afraid to take the risks necessary for our survival. You would know, Aku. <laughs> Seeing as how you're one of them, Monkey King. Most certainly, but for all of my defects, I'm canny enough to know one thing. You may be God is touched, but the Wolf Queen will destroy you if she finds out. How close you are to finding that monster, and how close you came to possessing it during the war. I'm not close enough, not now, and not seven years ago when the damn thing slipped away from me. You've been closer than anyone in a thousand years. Well, except for your sister, of course. And the monkey's like, oh, my apologies, I forgot myself. No, you didn't. My lady warlord, you discovered survivors from the heart of the blast when no one else could. Eight arcanic children who walked away without a scratch from the Constantine explosion. You have six of them. If their bodies won't tell us what happened that day and who released the monster, maybe their ghosts will. You see six cats standing in front of these six children that are chained up to the wall. And they have swords, you know, stabbed into the ground in front of them. And then you see the demon waking up going... This is intolerable. I cannot sleep. Not asleep deep enough for dreams. Curse that mask. Curse the child for doing it. And you. Has it been so long that even your face is hidden from me? Have I forgotten so much? I thought I could keep you alive forever. We were both fools. And now I am lost. It's like, again? No. Is nothing of mine sacred? And so you see Micah coming back and goes, No, please stop. Leave me alone. Don't be scared. Don't scream. Don't think about what's inside you. Pretend it's not there. Miss, does it still hurt? Your stump? You keep staring at it. You are in control. Stop watching me, little fox. I thought you needed to piss. I already went, but then I heard your stomach growl. You scare me when you're hungry. So Kippa goes... Digging in the ground. He goes, Carrots, these are ripe enough to be sweet. Here, eat this too. It's wild garlic. My mother my mother told me it keeps your body strong. My mother used to say, and then she goes, throw me a carrot. So Kippa throws it, but it falls short. And the demon comes ripping out of her arm and grabs the carrot. And Kippa's like, ah! He's like, I cannot return to sleep. Somehow you have made that impossible. You have the most unquiet mind, which is vexing. <laughs> so Micah tries to grab a sword and plunge into the thing, and of course it breaks. And she goes, however, as I am awake, I will soon require sustenance. We could do worse than to eat the child. Micah's like, fuck, 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 fuck. And the keeper's like, stay away from me. Dear goddess, dear goddess, dear goddess. Fold me in your light, protect me from your enemies, let no shadows touch. Can she hear me? Yes, I can. God is send it away, send away the shadow. How wearying, the child must have the old blood in her, she can hear me. God is, God is, fold me in your light. Beggars, alas, cannot be choosers. Kill her. Michael's like, you will not touch her. I will tear you from my body, I will kill myself first. You cannot stop me. You have no power over me. I am a god. Spit on that. If you're so godlike, then why the fuck are you living inside me? 
And the team was just like looking at her in surprise. And was like, right. Stay here, Kippa, and keep praying. I'm going hunting. She goes off, so the demon has sprouted out of her arm and is basically formed into uh, like a giant claw. And there's eyes just, you know, popping out all over it. Uh, any Naruto fans, uh, if you remember when uh, Sasuke fought, you know, that guy that had all the uh, Uchiha clan eyes implanted in his arm, you know, at the very end of the series. Uh, <laughs> spoiler warning for anyone that hasn't seen it. Not a really big deal, but there was a character at the end that had like a bunch of arms implanted, eyes implanted in his arm. Similar kind of look with uh, the demon, what's hap what the demon looks like. So Micah's like, what are you? A ghost? A spirit? A disease? Your questions do not matter. I have slept a long time in oblivion. But you intruded with the mask... And that was enough to make me lessless. Worse, you touched it. You touched it. You woke not only me, but many, many eyes will search for the mask. Searching for the mask will lead them to you, to me. It bodes ill for us all, even for the world. Micah's like, you are a chatty fucking monster. <laughs> Especially about nothing I care about. Now shut up. I require meals with a bit more intelligence. And they see a boar that's coming out ahead of them. And Micah's like, then you're not really hungry, are you? On the contrary, you are simply lazy. Do you hear that? I know you can. Something else is in these woods. Something more appropriate. You can taste it, can't you? It is already wounded. It is dying. Will that satisfy your risible mortality? So they find one of the guards from earlier. And he's like, I thought as much. This meal will do. And Micah grabs it, the guard, and of course just sucks the life force out of her and turns her into a husk. He's like, for now. And Kippa's walking around going, God is God, is full being your light. And it's like, oh, you see a bunch of the more of the guards all just killed in horrific ways. You know, some of them are bisected, some of them are headless. And then Micah shows up behind him and goes, I told you not to go anywhere. He's like, don't, don't. He's like, I won't. I can't. The monster, it's gone. I fed it. Kippa's like, what is it? What are you? And she's like, come here. Help me look for my things. And Kippa's just like not moving. She's like, you're right. Stay there. The witch nuns wouldn't kill their own, would they? Witches don't have weapons that can do this. Not many do. And then Ren shows up and is like, well, that's disgusting. Kip was like, Master Ren! <laughs> and she grabs him and just hugs him really tight and close. And he's just acting really cat-like and trying to squirm out of her grasp. And she's like, not having it. It's like, there now, Kippa, everything is fine. He's like, where did you go, cat? He's like, I had to lead Amelia and her baby to a safe place. And then I retrieved your belongings from these soldiers. They were still alive then. I didn't kill them. Those wounds were made by a night cutter. That's a dust court weapon. But the dust court is under the silence. None of their archaics have been seen in years. So where are my belongings, cat? And who the fuck is out there using a night cutter? And you see, a, that would be me. And I believe this is yours. And you see uh, someone descending from the sky, you know, with midnight black wings, holding the bag in one hand, with a giant uh, pole axe with a spear tip and like an axe head. We another esteemed lecture from Professor Tam Tam. The poets will be the first to confess that no one, not even they in all their inspired wisdom, can identify where the ancients were first born. Uh, not even the ancients know for certain. It is one of the nine great mysteries that has not be yet been solved. Ghosts are silent on the matter. So Zubasti, blessed be her name. But we do know the identity of the first arcanic half-breed. 
Listen, kids, there used to be rules. An ancient might take a human as a lover, but nothing would come of it. No children, none ever for thousands of years. Ancients rarely bred amongst themselves, but it didn't matter to them. Immortality robs life of any urgency and any other important values. Humans were an exotic pastime, intelligent, amusing, enterprising, quick to worship the ancients as emissaries of the old gods. Power is attractive. Remember that. No one, not even the greatest servant of Ubasti, is entirely immune to its call. Uh, but power sometimes had a mind of its own, and it's thought that the same mysterious force that made the ancients remade them again, removing that last wall between their flesh and humans. And so a child was conceived. No one understood and she was, she was born. The midwives gazed upon the infant's face and instead of a small ancient, found themselves holding a small human. Oh, how this half-breed frightened them all. The other ancients almost killed the child. They would have, had it not been for the mother and her considerable power. And of course, the aid of a cat. The great poet Ruskaya brings Brass Talon, who spirited the infant away and raised her in the temple of Ubasti. Other half-children born soon after were not so lucky. Poet Ruskaya made sure to strike the child's true name from the records, but we all know her, for she became the shaman empress the first and greatest of the many half-breeds to come. She, wa she who was more powerful than even the ancients. She who paved the way for a new race, both ancient and human. The Arcanix, she who shattered the world. Chapter five. Would you believe, Toya, if I told you I'm empty on the inside? Would that make it easier? I hunger and I rage and I tell myself there's nothing else inside me. Memories don't count, not when they're like this. They see a bunch of children, including Micah, you know, pushing themselves to at a barbed wire fence, trying to get in. So uh, Lady Elsa is standing outside uh, the barbed wire fence where all the children are being kept. You know, there's another child holding an umbrella over her head, just eating a bowl of noodles. Lady Ilsa, you'll catch a cold. You should come inside. Hold your tongue, brat. I'm running an experiment. I'm empty, except I'm not. Who is the hungriest of all, I wonder? You remember what it was like when we were slaves? Who will pass my test? How you and I convinced each other we still owned our lives? How we imagined ourselves somewhere else? She holds, also holds out a spoonful, a chopstick full of noodles to the children and they grab it and you'll bring it inside. But the dream never lasted. We had to endure. We had to fight. So Micah goes and you know, swats aside all the other children. You were always the one who hoped. You had enough hope for the both of us. He's like, Tuya, are you hurt? He's like, no, I wish I had that gift. Said, I saved you some, Micah, so she spits out some of the noodles into her hand. Because I'm in a cage again, Tuya. My body isn't my own. You and I will take care of each other forever, I promise. There's something else inside me. Maybe I've lost my mind. And also, it's like, very interesting. I'm scared, Tuya. So scared I can't breathe. All I can do is pretend it doesn't exist. I wish I'd never left you. I said, did you betray us, Cat? Tuya told me to bring you over the wall. She said someone would meet us. I didn't know that someone would be from the Dust Court, and I didn't dare refuse him when he took your things. Tuya doesn't have connections in the Dust Court. No one does. Not since Constantine. Micah Halfwolf. I was expecting a grown woman given the amount of blood you're accused of spilling in Zamora, but you're only a child. We have broken our long silence for you. I am Sir Corvin de Oro, first watchman of the court, commander of the inner wall. I am here to guide you to safety. And then Micah pulls out a gun and goes, stay right there, don't come any closer. And then Ren is like, Micah, 
Don't threaten a member of the Dust Court unless you want all of us to die. I'll do more than threaten. I'll blow your, f I'll blow your wings off your fucking back. Toss the bag to the little fox. Where's Tuya? I do not know that name. I was commanded here by a gathering of the Dust Court. Upon pain of death, I was, I was to find you and bring you north. He's like, why? He's like, miss, something's missing. It was the half wood wolf blood runs strong in all of you. And then she shows the photo of the mother. You shouldn't have taken that photo, sir. You should give it back before something bad happens. Bring it to me, Kippa. Miss, you don't know shit, Ravenborn. I know you're the lone daughter of the great Moriko half wolf. I know that the eye of the dust court is upon you. The prophets have seen your face. They have told the gathering that you carry a power that will reshape the world, for better or worse. They prophesize that without your power, the dust court will fall. <laughs> Cupid's so adorable. She goes up and she's like, eh, eh, and scared. She just reaches up and grabs the portrait and brings it back. Michael's like, that's all very sad, but I'm not going north for any reason. So go back to your court and it's silence. Tell them we haven't missed any of you. And so Corvin, Corvin, Coria, Corvin tells her, you'll die if you go south, if you go to Theria. The prophets have seen that too. From the air, I saw Camion soldiers coming over the wall. Soldiers just like the ones I killed here. They are hunting you. If you turn south, you'll be captured. Prophets are full of shit. I think you are too. You child ravaged an entire Kumian compound. You stole everything they value even more than the treaty. News of it has already spread even to the dust court. I don't need prophets to know you're in trouble. There is an airship waiting two days ride south from here. Waiting two days ri ride from here. Your only hope is to come north with me. Micah's like, my only hope? She goes, all right, lead the way. That is very sensible. I have to piss, then I'll leave. <laughs> she just turns right around and starts pissing, and the Corvin just gets all embarrassed and turns around. He's like, ah. It's like, really? There are bushes, you know. And the demon's like, girl, don't talk to me, demon. Foolish girl, can you not see? That is no common servant of the court. That is an arcanic lord, the child of an ancient in full power. Talk to me again, I'll cut you out of me. We must get away from him. He could kill us before you draw a single breath. I told you to shut up. Why don't you just drain his life? Aren't you hungry? How your line has so degenerated, I cannot explain. Can you not sense the shield surrounding him? Even I, at my full strength, could not pierce it easily. You would be in 49 pieces before I punch through it, and I am weary. Really, tell me why I should believe a word you say. Do not be dumber than you are, girl. This is the second time you have been in the presence of an arcanic lord and not known it. You cannot even trust yourself. I must sleep again. Run, foolish girl, or die. I suppose it does not matter to me either way. There is still another of your line into whom, may my, whom I may pass. He's like, wait, what did you say? Well, do we proceed? That which frightens my enemy is my friend. Who said that, cat? Why, the poets, of course. Are you having second thoughts? I, for one, am glad for the help. We need to get... Glad for the help. We need to get away from these soldiers. He's an arcanic mist. He must be safe. Am I safe, little fox? I think you try to be. You're just not very good at it. No, I'm not. We go with him for now. And if you get hungry, he'll make a better meal than you. So we go back to the Kamea and we hear the arcanic menace is real. The beasts hanging before you use their demonic powers to slaughter every n novice and nun in this city's order. Good women who minister to you and your families destroyed in a heartbeat. And for what? So it looks like they rounded up all the arcanic prisoners that escaped and just basically using them as cat's paws. Nothing but hate. 
The war is not over. Archaics do not wish for peace. All they want is your blood. Do you know what I disliked most about the war? The endless propaganda. It was so boring. Sophia, what are you doing? It's too soon. Shut up. I'm sick of not knowing. I'd rather... Oh, sweet Marion. She's taken off all the bandages and he's looking at her burned and scarred face. She goes, remember how I healed. The Lilium will take away the scars. It'll be good as new. Except for my hair. Well, it was going to turn white eventually. Any word on the Arcanic who did this? None. I've never met, been met with such silence. Silence allows the Mother Superior to tell any story that suits her needs. I doubt she cares whether the girl is found. She's trying to start this war you're so afraid of, even if it means massacring her own people. Even the children. The bitch. She would have murdered us if we weren't useful. Did your mother come see you? Of course not. Even if she had been free to move about, she wouldn't have bothered. Not that I wouldn't mind getting my hands on her from everything you described. My resurrection formula should never have worked. I need to understand what the Mother Superior altered. Unlike some, I don't believe in blessings from Miriam. Something was done. Something that can be tested. I've been summoned back to the capital. Even the Mother Superior could not countermand that order when you're healthy enough to be moved. Be careful, Atina. We're the only two people who know what really happened here. That's dangerous. So are we. And she kisses her lover before she leaves. So, Captain Goodwill, it's so lovely to see you again. The same to you, Lady Atina. It's been too long. Your family is a mite worried, given recent events. Your sister said we should be at your disposal as long as you need us. I appreciate that, Captain. And my guest, I assume he's safe below? No one saw us bring him aboard or the child. Child? See, Sebasti, go to the other room. Damn you, Rysuk. Thank Marium you're out of that place. But you're a fool. Hard enough to snuggle out, out one arcanic, but two? You could have compromised the mission. This is the mission, is it not? Saving arcanic lives? Saving all our lives? I'm sorry I couldn't help the others. I heard about what you had to do this morning. I don't want to talk about that. Then perhaps we should discuss the Arcanic girl, the one who almost killed you. She was a monster, Resik. I've never encountered such power in an Arcanic or a Fury. She's the monster the Kamiya made, Atina. Her hate isn't without reason. I don't know that I don't I know that, but it doesn't make her less terrifying. And now the Smother Superior is obsessed. Not because the girl killed anyone, she took something, a fragment of a mask. A mask? What kind of mask? Was it very old? I have no idea. Why? I need to think on it. Huh, I know that tone. You were, were you able to retrieve Sophia's papers before the Inquisitrix attack? Even the secondary copies, as well as her correspondence with other scientists and scholars. All her Ilium research is in our possession, Atina. The Camilla have nothing. That won't stop Sophia. She's too brilliant, too stubborn. The Prime Minister will want to hear this news. Atina, I'm glad you're safe. When the Inquisitrix came, the Mother Superior herself, I feared you had been discovered. You could have been killed too, all those days hiding in the sewers, and before that when Sophia had you as her slave. It broke my heart, Rasik. I'm so sorry you had to wear the collar. You had to watch as I would do it again. This is what our father taught us, is it not? This is for the greater good, and a brother always helps his sister. Blood protects blood. Oh, shit. All right. So, the well, no, the dog human one, like the one I described at the very beginning of this read-through, is a Tina's sister. And so it looks like they're both Arcanics that have gone undercover in the Kumia compound to try and discover this. And Atina herself is probably like Micah where she doesn't look like an Arcanic, but she is. And I'm guessing that that's who the demon was talking about, was talking about her and being able to possess her. God damn, like... The twists in this series. <sighs> so Yvette goes, I can still hear you. I can hear your voice. No matter how far away you are, I hear you. 
One day, one day we'll have the power to understand you. We are bound together for all eternity, and when we have the mask again, where is the Mother Superior? Go, you idiots, and get me a healer. What happened? The Arcana girl. She did more than take Flay's arm. Scared her shitless. I've never seen her like this. No, 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 Ilium. Need a clear head. Have to tell what I saw. A monstrum in her skin. The half-wolf? What did you see? Was she using the mask? And the Mother Superior says, Everyone out. Tong, take Lady Yvette with you. I am here, child. Tell me what you saw. A demon. A demon tore from the Arcanic's body. Like in the drawings of the old one, the horror unnamed. The mother of all monsters, you mean. Yes, crazy. But I saw it. You must believe me. A monster lives beneath her skin. The girl is one of them. The old one is pretending to be her so it can kill us all. Shh, I believe you. Oh, Moriko, what did you hide from us? Shit. Oh my god, the Mother Superior has one living in her. She drains all the life out of Flay. Daughters should always feed their mothers. So it's like, you're too late. Flay succumbed. I can only surmise her death was a delayed reaction from exposure to demonic infernal energies. You will have your revenge. Tell the commander we're leaving the airship immediately. Yes, Holy Mother. The fragment of the mask. You can tell us where it is, in life or death. Find it for me and perhaps I'll set you free. I've never seen the Ravenborn ride a horse. It seems to defeat the purpose of having wings. Wings tire easier. Wings tire. Easier to keep an eye on you down here anyway. If I'm so precious, why did the dust court send only one of you? Any more than that draws the eye, and the Kumea have good eyes. I'm still perplexed, though, at how young you are, but I suppose it changes nothing. I'm 17, not a child. Aren't you? What's the dust court like? Sir, they're not allowed to speak of it with the outsiders, young Kippa, especially not with us peasants. Not all arcanes are equal, little fox, no matter what the poets say. That is not true, Micah. We are all equal in the esteem of the Sacred Mother, but not in their eyes. We're worse than mud to the great and ancient lords and ladies of the court. Mud at least you can wash off. Your bitterness is curious, given your own lineage, Lady Half-Wolf. I am no lady. I grew up in the dirt. What about you, Raven? How high were you born? So I just need to take some more water. I was born an orphan, son of a common soldier who died fighting the humans. While you were enjoying your mother's privileges, I was chewing on rocks, Lady Half-Wolf. We're all the same inside the cage when they put the collars on us. I wish we could remember that. Everyone is the same when the witches catch you. Well, an agent of the Dust Court, how extraordinary. I've always wanted to mount a set of wings on my wall. So, Needle and Hammer are watching her. Oh yes, Hammer. This is far more of a conspiracy than we realized. I think perhaps we'll enjoy an interrogation or two before the killing begins. Take a brief rest. We'll walk the horses the rest of the way. At the top is an old citadel where we'll spend the night. Is that your mother? She's very beautiful. She's dead. So is mine. I already had this photo, but only this left half. The person who gave it to me said there was no one else in it, nothing worth seeing. She lied. I need to find out why. That's why I'm going to Theria. I need to f her to tell me the names of this Finn boy and the woman. I need to her to tell me why she lied. What does the back say? The back of what? The back of the photo. People write things on them sometimes. That's what my family did. Names, dates, places. To remember. Here, I'll help you. So Kippa opens it. Oh, takes the picture out of the frame, and you see Micah and Moriko Halfwolf, uh, Y Lalum, and then Arcamariel, the Razor Light, Liu Han, the Night Before You. 
I'm like an animal to you. What's wrong now? You look like you want to kill someone. No, I think that's her happy face. I don't know anything. All the simple things you and others take for granted. All that you remember how to do and feel. All that makes you normal. And then Corvin comes and goes, it's time to go. I've lost them. I'm blind to them. Are you well? You look pale. I'm hungry, that's all. What else am I blind to? What have I missed? What am I missing even now? That's quite a hunger. Your pulse is elevated. I can hear your heart pounding in your chest from here. Distract me if you're so concerned. Have any arcanic lords or ladies left the protection of your court since the end of the war? And risk communion agents slaughtering them? You always said to you that I have to take a chance on trust. Their blood is the most pure. The witches would reap a thousand arcanics for one ancient, or the child of an ancient. Why do you ask? Like you said, I'm not just any half-wolf. But what does it mean to choose with my gut when a monster is there? Who do I trust, me or it? You've been awfully quiet, Master Ren, all day since we met the wingman. Are you scared of something? Perhaps, Kippa. I'm scared all the time, but it's easier when you have friends. At least you can count on them not to hurt you. And then Ren sees something as a Kippa. Come here quick, now. <laughs> oh fuck, what now? And then you see a badass warrior cat with a goatee. <laughs> oh man, this oh new favorite character, new favorite character found. Welcome Lady Micah Half Wolf. Please do not struggle. It would end badly for you. They were not quite ready for you to die. And she's surrounded by a bunch of other uh, arcanics. So I'm just going to see how much is left in here. Okay. Uh, so we cats are but one of five races who walk the known world. Cats are the oldest race, of course. Ubasti herself is more ancient than the old gods. It was she who helped banish them during the dawn war with us. Her children gathered at her side. So the phrases of the known world, humans, cats, children of Ubasti, the Arcanic who are the half-breeds, the old gods who are the, the ones with the three eyes that keep showing up, and the ancients who are the, you know, full humans like, not the humans, the, uh, the animal people like the uh, wolf one. Humans were born later and crawled from the sea on legs that one, had once been nothing but scales and fins. An exiled caste, the poets say, cursed to live on land for betraying the trust of their goddess. A fractious race, and though they are denied magic, some human females are born with mental powers that mimic the arcane. Telepathy, telekinesis, foretelling. Excuse me. The Kume search for such children to steal them into their order. The origins of the ancients remain a mystery. We do not know if they descended from the beasts whose forms they wear, or if beasts are their children. Their past is shrouded in mystery, but they are a powerful race blessed by their lunar goddess with fearsome magic and the greatest gift of all, immortality. Wondrous gifts to bestow on any being, perhaps foolish as well. The ancient wisdom, alas, was not equal to their strength. They warred with each other for a thousand years. Some even took cats as slaves. It was not until the Queen of Wolves herself killed the great bear King Baru that there was any semblance of peace. Only then did the ancients flourish with the decadent culture you see now, one that is split into two courts, the dusk and the dawn. Despite their philosophical differences, both courts have never been able to deny themselves the pleasures of human company which brings us to the Archaics. Some will argue against defining Archaics as their own race as they're merely hybrids of humans and ancients. If there are only a handful of them, I might agree, but that is not the case. Archaics have spread far and wide upon this world, able to breed as quickly as humans and possessing some of the powers of their ancient forebearers, they carry the best and worst of both parents. A few look human, most do not. And then there are the old gods. 
We know next to nothing about these mythic beings except they are creatures of immense and destructive power who the poets believe once threatened nearly all existence. Now only their shadows haunt this world. Many archaics worship them or attempt to placate them with offerings, but there is nothing divine about the old ones. They are horrors. It is sad that the most terrible of the old gods was not banished with its kin, that it yet slumbers in our world. When it makes, may Ubasti save us all. Chapter 6 In all my five lives I never thought I'd see a Naraka sarcophagus, let alone a functioning one. This must be at least a thousand years old. Are you sure it will hold her? The Naraka sarcophagus Ooh, the Naraka sarcophagus held the most powerful of the dire ancients and kept them deep in sleep. But Micah Halfwolf isn't an ancient, and what she has inside her is not of this world. So I'm not sure, but it's all we have. I find that an in in ill comfort, Baroness. The Halfwolf killed some of my finest soldiers. Such a waste of their lives. I'm sorry for your loss, Tano. Bah! Corvin is out looking for that two-tailed necromancer. I don't trust that cat. We need no loose ends or problems before we return to the court. Will the council let her wake before they kill her? No, she will never open her eyes again. Good, and I hope they destroy that blasted mask fragment too. Just knowing it exists makes my pelt itch. What a deceptively feastful face she has. What goes on in the mind of someone like that, I wonder? What does a monster dream of? Oh, I think I know the half-wolf's dreams. Stupid fool, you should have listened to me and run. I may have slept through generations of your bloodline, but some things do not change. The ancients, the dust court, and the dawn, their minds are ever small and resentful. And now you are in an unnatural sleep. A sleep that has imprisoned even me. I could be trapped here for a thousand years, unable to move on to another body. And if they find a way to destroy me while you're in this state, then maybe I should thank you. Isn't death what I want? Still, why are you so different from the others? Why are you so hunted? It cannot be just the mask or me. Yes, you are right. I know too little about the child. I have not cared to learn more about her life. I did not think I would be awake long enough for it to matter. But she is too much like you, too strong. I find that strange, and strange is dangerous, is it not? Strange is how we found each other, and strange is how we lost each other as well. So who are you, foolish child? Who is bearing me into this new life? Oh, man, how much more? Sorry, all it's been over two hours now, so I'm just wondering. You know what? I am actually going to cut it off there there's only about one two three four five six eight twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen there's about twenty five more pages left in the volume i did not know this was going to take me so i thought you know the book looked relatively thin so it didn't take it would take me this long to get through it but uh i'm going to cut it off here and uh, what I'll do is I'll do another video finishing off the last 20 or so pages. And then with that, I'll do kind of my like my final thoughts on uh, the first volume of Monsters. You know, what I thought about it, what I liked about it, favorite characters, all that. So I will do that in another video uh, sometime this weekend. Uh, with Alita, I'm, with Alita, the reason I kind of held off on doing that later and doing Monsters first was... I know Alita is like really damn long. It's going to take me a while uh, to get through it. So Alita, when I record my reaction to that, I will probably do it uh, chapter wise. So I'll do like, you know, chapter one or two or however many uh, chapters per reaction video. So I'll kind of skim through it quickly and see how text heavy and everything it is and decide on that. But uh, yeah, so finish this off uh, sometime this weekend. And uh, I'm going to cut, uh, hopefully have this video because it's Thursday night here where I am. So I'll process video, get everything ready, and hopefully I'll have it out by tomorrow evening for your consumption. Like I said, 
Uh, expect a couple of streams from me this weekend. I'm going to be super busy doing that. And then after that, don't expect too many more videos of this nature. I'll try to do one sporadically, but for the next two months at least, I won't be able to... I'm just going to be too busy to kind of do anything. But uh, I think sometime May onwards, I'll be back to Shonen Jump reactions. But... As always, thank you all for joining me. You know, if you like my videos, please do uh, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like the format for how I did Monstrous, you know, apart from the splitting it out into chapters, let me know if there's anything you think I can improve on. Till next time, I'll talk to you all later.